Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Thomas Peterson. Goes from NASA and it's uh... Hello and welcome to another Current Affairs here at Copenhagen Suborbitals. Today we have Stein with us. And Stein, you are our FIDO. Yes. Can you uh, yeah. explain what that is? Yeah, actually it's a abbreviation from uh, NASA, as we borrow all of those from NASA. And it's a, it's a flight dynamics officer keeping track of the rocket. And um, we're here to talk about the application called FIDO, but it's uh, originally it was a person, a role, uh, that was called FIDO, actually FDO, but when you say it, it's it's FIDO, so they changed that to uh, to that abbreviation. Yeah. And so, Stein, for uh, I think it was for our Sapphire launch that you wrote the, this application. Is this uh, it's prior to that, uh, dating back to the heat it okay. but it has changed a lot in the appearance. Yes. Okay. And so. You say it's to keep track of the rocket. So, yes. so what do we have on the rocket that helps uh, that that uh, interfaces <coughs> with this application? Uh, we have the uh, two GPS, which uh, send down uh, position uh, parameters. That is uh, the latitude and longitude and the altitude. Uh, we have two of those, and uh, then we have a barometer, a pressure sensor, uh, that we can use to calculate the the altitude according to the atmosphere. Of course, that has the limit of uh, the precision of the pressure sensor when you get above, I think, uh, 10,000 10, meters, 10 kilometers. Uh, mm -hmm. The precision is not good enough. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So it basically keeps track of the rocket based uh, on GPS. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so this is uh, this is the the one and only screen of the yes. software, right? Like so, can you can you talk us through what what do we see on the screen? What are, what are the various windows? Yeah, we have uh, basically. Uh, three panels, the data panel here with the uh, countdown clock at the top and we have an altitude panel here and we have our map application over here or the map panel over here. Mm -hmm. And the countdown clock is just for showing mission control how we are in the process. We have a mission control box which uh, flight director you will activate and by that you are activating the sequencer in the engine controller and you can see the countdown here. So when that reaches uh, zero, you should see the lift off as well, hopefully. Yes. Um, and so on the, uh, so we currently we have uh, two uh, panels over here. With a lot of data, yes. Yes. And that's, uh, when you hire engineers to do this, you end up with a lot of data and uh, most of it you cannot, you haven't got time to, to observe it, but um, so what do we have in, uh, in these, uh, so I can see we have some, some latitude and longitude. Yes, in, in numbers, decimal degrees, we have a distance from the mission control, we have the bearing from the mission control, so you can see uh, the bearing that you should look at um, according to true north. We have an ETA, we calculate from the current uh, flight parameters an estimation of when it will splash down. Yeah, so that is... Uh, if it doesn't open a parachute, if it, uh, if it, uh, that depends on where you are in the track. Okay, if, so it if depends on the current velocity. The current velocity and uh, the density of the atmosphere and how long you expect the burn to go on. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can calculate the ballistic uh, flight path, and if you are prior to uh, uh, releasing the parachutes, we anticipate those to be released. So this calculation will be. Uh, based on your release of the parachutes. Yeah. If this, when you get to in the flight path where you should have passed the release point of the parachute and for some reason you don't uh, register that, the ETA will be done without that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so here we have, I mean, uh, representation with numbers. Yes. So over here we have a graphical representation of some of the, oh, the same parameters. Yeah. A much easier way to read a, an altitude is to have some sort of a graphical indication and we have from 0 to 30, 30 uh, kilometers here um, and we have two points that you can follow up. Um, 
This is a uh, this is a reminiscent uh, a leftover from uh, Sapphire mm -hmm. because we have two GPSs, but they are in the same unit, so, yeah. so they will roughly be on the same path. Yeah. But we have a sometimes a situation where uh, you lose the GPS fix, and then uh, it's it's good to have uh, redundancy mm -hmm. in this case. But two markers that will indicate the the flight path as mm -hmm. we had on Sapphire. And so on the graph we have both the altitude, but we have also the, the downrange distance. Yes. In this case from 0 to 10 kilometers, hopefully that would be a lot less. At Sapphire it was only uh, 250 meters yeah. uh, downrange. The, so uh, the ambition is, of course, still with Nexo 2 to shoot vertically up into the air. Yeah. Right. So, so we, we should come down pretty, pretty close to where we actually launch. Yes. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the graph that will appear here once mm -hmm. we, uh, we're flying. Then we have the big window over here that currently says no downlink. Yeah, that's because we just set up the computer and we are not flying the rocket and we are not uh, interfacing with the electronics right now. So there is a clear indication that uh, if you see any data, you cannot trust them mm -hmm. because there is no, no downlink of data. <coughs> but, but I think this is a very important panel because it helps you and uh, other people in, in, um, in mission control to have a situational awareness. What you see here with this uh, square sort of uh, figure, the black one here, uh, that's ESD-139, this uh, special shooting area. So the, the military shooting area. Yes. Yeah. And so we have Bornholm Island right out here. Yeah, just right you can see the tip of uh, yeah. the eastern part here. Nexu. So Nexu is right, right here, so this is where we depart in the early hours of the morning. And we sail to more or less the center of the shooting. Exactly. Terrain. Yes. Yes. And, and so, w when the rocket is flying, what what will we see on the screen? You will see uh, two markers of the GPS positions. That is the the rocket itself. It's a round marker, and then you will see uh, all the A AIS information that we have. We interface not only with the downlink of uh, telemetry, but also with the uh, maritime AIS system. So we can basically see uh, all the ship's course and positions and uh, speed uh, of this part of the Baltic Sea. Uh, of course, if they have an AIS transponder, yeah. which all commercial ships have. It. Yeah. So, so this and, and several of, of our ships have all AIS. Of them, all of all them, them now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we can see the position of our ships. We can yeah. see the position of the rocket, and we can see the position of the recovery vessels. Yes. Yes. And so... And you can do simple measurements like uh, double click, and then you can calculate a, sti uh, a distance from a point to another point and get the course, the initial course yes. you're supposed to take. Yes. So if the rocket comes down, hopefully in the parachute, and it drifts by the wind, it's quite easy to see uh, to which direction you should sail. Yes. And so this is the system we will use to uh, to issue uh, an order to uh, to the rip boats to to chase after the uh, yes, the rocket. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. If okay. you have no visual uh, on the rocket, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, so this was the purpose why we uh, developed this this system uh, initially, and it was uh, Stein here who uh, who uh, developed it. Uh, yeah. Right. And uh, I think that was more or less it, Stein. So I'll just okay. say uh, thank you for uh, demonstrating it and uh, telling us what the system is all about. Yeah, you're thank welcome. You. Thank you. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage, www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.